Amen unto Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Amen and amen and amen. Um, once again, I want to welcome us to the uh, third day of our meeting. Amen to Jesus. Um, this is um, our meeting time made perfect. Made perfect. Amen to Jesus. Now, in accordance with our um, month work for the month of July and also our fasting and prayer program for the month of July in the prayer nation. Amen to Jesus. Praise God for everyone. I believe that we'll be blessed thus far. The first day, the second day, Thursday, Friday, last week was awesome. And today is going to be the third day that we know it's run through the weekdays of the working days in every week. Amen to Jesus. So I'm going to be having a great time of fellowship today again. I will trust the Holy Spirit for great things today in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we are yours. Yes, sir. It's made the name God. We glorify you. We magnify you. Jesus, we celebrate you. Our Father, we worship you. Thank you for the privilege in your presence. Thank you for the time to, to, to share fellowship with you. Yes, sir. We recognize your presence. And we recognize your presence. Yeah, we recognize your presence. And we recognize your presence. Rule and reign. And Jesus be glorified. Let your flesh glory in itself. And to you we give all the praise and glory and the end of it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Alright, so we've been studying for a while since last week, um, three days, today makes it three days, we've been doing a little study, and I believe we've been getting blessed by the studies we've been having. Like I always say, um, what I do is to unite a fire, and I trust the Holy Spirit to help you study more. Um, so why don't you just go into prayer as a prayer and fasting meeting, but prayer without the world is like carrying a gun, an automated machine, a highly sophisticated machine, without bullets. That's what prayer without the world is. So if you must have results, you need the world in your God. Are we together? And also carrying the world without prayer is like carrying bullets without what? The God praise God. So both of them will carry us. Amen to Jesus. Alright, so in the past two days we have learned before we get to a recap of what we have learned and then we'll go into today's um, teaching. We learned what does it mean to be perfect um, and we understood that what perfect is for the real words tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you and tell you means basically to be, to, uh, to, to be complete, to accomplish, to finish, to bring to an end, to add what is yet wanting in order to render a thing full, to be found perfect, to bring to the end that is a proposed end to achieve a goal, to bring the proposed end to achieve a goal. It means to bring to a close of fulfillment by events. These are things of prophecies of scripture. And it means the consummate of character. The consummate of character. So when we're talking about perfection, we're talking about the peak, the whole and the, the peak of character, the consummate of character. And so when we're talking about perfection, when we hear perfection most of the times, all we think of is the canal is the most perfect that concerns me. Oh my husband. My wife, my children, my job, my finances, my whatever, whatever, whatever. We have many things in our mind when we talk about perfection. But we always remove one thing from the picture, and that is the thing called character. Without consummation of character, there is no perfection. Are we together? So, um, perfection also means the consummate of character. So, if everything as it were is Perfect in your life is ex is, is perfect. If the, the, your marriage is is, is 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 perfect. Your children, everything God has provided everything for you, but you are lacking in character. You are still not you are still not attaining the status of what perfection. In Genesis chapter two, four verse one, the Bible says, "And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things." I like that verse of scripture. I don't know the only place I know in Genesis about Abraham's story that I have in my memory. And Genesis chapter twelve says, "And the Lord said unto Abraham." If I leave your father's house and I will bless thee. Let's talk about 12 verse 1. Uh -huh, I, I have that in my memory. But the next place I have in my memory is Genesis 24 verse 1. And the Lord had blessed Abraham God all day. So I have the beginning of his journey of into the promised land, and I have many people at the end of his life, at the end of it all, the Lord had blessed him in all things. So there was nothing wanting, there was nothing missing. 
say we're loving people. So perfection entails the consummate of character. Character is very pregnant in perfection. And it also means to consecrate. So perfection entails consecration. What is holiness? Holiness is being set apart. God told Moses, He said, take the bread, take the oil and the sauce, and then prepare a special oil. And then you shall anoint them with this oil and consecrate them for the for the office of the priest. And then God told me he said, anoint the horns in altar. He said, and whatsoever touches the horn shall be made holy. Consecration is simply setting something apart for a particular purpose. And when that thing is set apart for that purpose, it cannot do any other work. Purpose is set for that purpose. Are we together? So to be made perfect is to be consecrated for the Lord's use. I believe what I'm saying. To be set apart for the Lord's use. In other words, to be made more holy. Holiness is being set apart. Now, holiness is not in code. The holiness is not defined by what we do or what we don't do. Holiness is defined by what God has done for us, which is what? Setting us apart. Now, what we do and what we don't do, actually, it is meant to be the end product of what? The consecration, which is the holiness. So, the acts are the end product of God's work. Are we together? But when we have holiness, most of the time we think of acts. No, but that is not holiness. Holiness is not acts. Holiness is the consecration of the Father. When the Father consecrates you for your work, are you getting what I'm saying? Then anything that follows out that is are what we call the acts of consecration. That means what? They are the fruit of consecration. They are the fruit of holiness. But holiness in itself is not the fruit. It is what the Father has done. Let me explain to you. The Bible says, it is Christ who walking to us and both will be able to do of his great pressure. But then he says, then walk out your own salvation if you are trained. Are you getting it? It is him who walks in us. And based on what he walks in us, we can now walk out. But if he's not walking in us, we cannot walk out. Over the time, I grew up as a, as a, as a, as a Christian, uh, from a Christian family, born into a Christian family. My, uh, uh, my, I was trained in the way of the Lord. I grew up to always hear, what kind of salvation if you are trembling? What kind of salvation if you are trembling? But they never told us, it is Christ who will get to you, go to Milan to do his great connection. Now, even that verse precedes the verse, the, uh, uh, the verse, walk out your salvation. Without him walking out, we cannot walk out. So, without holiness, actually, we cannot live holy. So, most of the time, the emphasis is put on living holy instead of what? Holiness. We must put the emphasis on what God is doing, what God has done, sorry, what He is doing. The Bible says He made us holy in love before Him. We must place emphasis on what He has done and what He is still doing in us. And when the emphasis is placed on that, we can now what? Do. Because it is holiness that empowers the fruit of holiness. That's just by the way that I'm just trying to make us understand what. Uh, what perfect means. These are the, 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 the synonyms that explain perfect. This is what it And it means to be finished. It means finished. So to be perfect means to be finished. To be finished. When you think about finish, it means the finished product. No touch any then again. Amen. It means to be fulfilled. Amen. It means to be fulfilled. Praise God. Now, so when we are talking about perfect, we are talking about there is no additional touch to be made again. Are you getting what I'm saying? No additional touch to be made again. Everything is at its perfect state. Character, consecration, and every other. Now, when we are really attaining this, we actually attain this in our spirit man. When we get born again, so we just find this uh, something. Is any if any man being Christ is a new creature, all things are passing, you never can become one new. We attain this status in our spirit man the moment we get born again. We are perfect in our spirit man. Perfect, totally what? Perfect in our spirit man. We are whole men. Now Adam was created a whole man, a perfect man, are we together? When the, we are we, when we are born of God, we are created whole perfect men. Our spirit man is totally perfect and mature. And you know what I'm saying? The same way Adam was created, is the same way our new our new man is created. Amen. It is created after God in righteousness and holiness. So he's perfect. We are taking this at what the new bed, praise God for our But the job we have to do is to keep making our soul uh, 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 to, 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 to be renewed to our true perfect nature and our body to align to the renewed soul. And that's why we keep teaching the word perfection. It's just the renewal of our soul to our new part to our real identity and then the alignment of our, of our body to this. Amen. Now, so we understood in our past lesson that um, from uh, God's intention from creation is what? Perfection. It's perfection. That's a result. God 
created Adam is what? In his image and his what? Likeness. Because he made Adam a perfect man. Genesis 1 verse 26 and 27 says, God said, let us make my own image and after our likeness. And then, um, if you say, said, God made man his own image like a man and he created him there. He prayed, amen, and called him what? Adam. So we see that God created man in his image and likeness. He created a perfect man. A perfect man. Praise God forevermore. Now, but he, when he created a perfect man, he didn't create a perfect earth. He created a very good earth. Instead of Genesis 1 verse 1 says, uh, and after God had created, he said everything was what? Very good. Everything was very good. So he created a perfect earth. Praise God forevermore. And he created, sorry, he created a perfect man, and he created a very good earth, and also created other creatures that were what? Very good. And placed them on earth, and then finally placed the perfect man on earth to make the very good earth and the very good creature perfect. You see that? So the only creature, the only, that is what creature that God created, because the being God created the heaven and the earth. So let's look at the heavens of the creature of God, the earth of the creature of God, amen. The, the plant life, the animal life, the firmament, and even that, the, the, the climatic life, and even that. Now, um, the, the plant factor, the animal factor, the climatic factor, um, they were all, they were all, uh, they were all uh, creatures of God. Of all the creatures that God created, only one he created perfect. And that was Adam. Praise God for all. But the other things were very good. And the priest had to make them what? Perfect. What, what, what an honor God gave to Adam. Amen to Jesus. Now, why did he do that? Because he created man perfect so that man can enjoy what it takes to create perfection. He didn't want to create man perfect and create everything perfect. There will be no, there will be no, let me say what, there will be no, there will be no challenge. There will be no fall. Are you getting what I'm saying? The essence of life, the fall of life, is meeting challenges and overcoming them. Is that not so? Now that's the essence of life. Our brain was wired to meet challenges and overcome them. Our muscles were wired to take on new challenges. Our system is wired to take on new challenges. Um, like somebody who told me, said, when you learn a new, new language, your brain improves, your brain expands. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are wired to take on challenges. So if God had created a perfect earth and a perfect Adam, man would have been docile. There would have been no excitement in life. The excitement of life that God gave to Adam was for him to do what? To start making the very good perfect. So with that, Adam will feel like God. Adam, when he created Adam, he brought every animal that he had made to see what Adam will make them. And say, whatever Adam made them, that was. That means it was before they were laid in the farm. But he wanted to test Adam to see if truly this my this my my my, my creature actually functions in the same mental frequency with me. And he saw that actually what was in his mind for every animal was what Adam did to say exactly the same mental frequency. So he created it very good. So Adam will have some form of doing what? Improving only to perfection. Praise God for him more. Now when God called. Everything he created very good. He included Adam. Someone will say yes, he included Adam and God created because this was Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. He has created yeah, by 26, he has created by 27. Genesis 1 27, he has created man and 28 he has created. So by 1 verse 31, he has created everything. So when God called everything very good, he included man. Yeah, that's what it means. Um, but this did not imply that Adam was created to be very good. Watch this very well. When he created, when he called everything good, when God called everything good in Genesis 1 verse 31, it included man, but he implied that man, Adam, he implied that Adam was created at the status of very good. Praise God for him Adam was created perfect. And why do I say so? The truth that Adam was created perfect like God is, is seen in three factors. Three factors. So, like I explained to us earlier on, Adam was created perfect, but the other factors were created very good. And then God put Adam on the earth to make all these other factors were perfect. So Adam will get an excitement, will get a feeling of being God. Are you getting me? The same feeling that God had when he created Adam from the dust. And then he breathed into him a vital breath, an angry breath. And I'm picking the living soul. That feeling of fulfillment, excitement, achievement, and it looked when he looked and said, Wow, I have made myself in 
flesh form. I have attained my perfection in flesh form. That feeling of fulfillment and excitement was what the Father wanted Adam to feel. Now, but the beauty about it was that God created everything from scratch with the words of his mouth. Are we together? But for Adam's sake, Adam did not have to create from the scratch. That's the beauty. The Father already created with the word of his mouth. He put it to the point of very good. Even he didn't even take it halfway. Are you getting what I'm saying? He didn't take it halfway. He took it to almost finish and told Adam, finish. Wow. Wow. So he did 90% of the job for Adam. And Adam had just like 10%. Take it from very good to perfect. And see how that feel with wow. Just wanted Adam to be a part of it, to feel what he felt, the sense of fulfillment. And most of us understand that when God tells us, I'm consecrating you to serve me, to work with me, come let us raise it together as we say, well, why is God calling me to raise it together? You don't know that every time God calls your attention is because he wants you to get the sense of fulfillment he is getting. He wants you to move from fellowship to partnership. He wants you to become his partner. See, God wanted Adam to become his partner. So understand what it means to create perfection. Adam enjoy the feeling of creating perfection. And you see, most of the time when we say, when we say God is, when we say deep, call that to deep. When we say the Lord is calling your attention, come and reason with me. Come and fellowship with me. When the Lord is calling to his presence of fellowship, we are saying, Lord, I'm too busy. Lord, I've got family to take care of. Lord, I've got a job to meet up with. Lord, I have needs to meet. Lord, that is even today, church has become a place of warfare because when people come to church, they don't actually come to fellowship with God and fellowship with the brethren. They are coming to extort God. But they don't understand that every time you have to fellowship with God, it's getting the feeling of oneness that God has. That sense of fulfillment. Every time you fellowship with Him, you have that sense of fulfillment. When you pray the Spirit for long hours, you have a sense of fulfillment. When you study the Word for long hours, you have a sense of fulfillment. When you fellowship with the brethren, you have a sense of, not, I don't mean when you gossip with the brethren, I mean when you fellowship with the brethren, you have a sense of fulfillment. And you get what I'm saying? A full sense, and that is what God wanted Adam to have, and that is what he still wants. The sense of fulfillment that we have, that the Father has, is what is actually called perfection. That's how one of the words I think this word to be fulfilled. This fulfillment does not come in having houses, clothes, shoes, wife, husband, children. No, it comes in, 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 in the consciousness, in the, in the sweetness of God's presence. <laughs> I'm going to praise God. I'm not, so that's the one I'm supposed to be going to. So let me stay on my track. Amen to Jesus. And that's not about my teaching. So let me stay on what I'm going to be teaching on. So we see that Adam was created perfect. And this is saying in three. Um, Three factors. Number one, Adam was the only creature of God made in God's image and likeness. Genesis 1 verse 26 to 27 tells us that. Number two, Adam was the only creature blessed with five components which entail power. In other creatures, God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. When he came to Adam, he said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue, have dominion. In our power conference, we took time to stay on um, 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 subdue and have dominion. We actually studied that in our power conference. You can go on. Um, 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 Grace life, change your food care of our own. You see our power conference teachings there. Even on Facebook, you can scroll but You see many of you see our um, videos there on power conference. We stay just on subdue and have dominion. Only Adam had those two components of the blessings. And those two components of the blessings were the power components. They were the empowerment God. They were actually the addition that made man perfect. Subdue. Dominion. Those were the two things that actually made man perfect. If you compare them with another creature, God told another creature, the fruit will multiply and replenish the earth. But what brought perfection to man? Other creatures stopped at three. That's what made them very good. Are you getting it? But what gave man perfection was what? Subdue and have dominion. So as a, as, as a child of God, if you are not subduing, if you are not having dominion, I'm sorry to say, you are still living at the level of very good. And you are still living like every other creature. A good, there's no difference between you and the woods. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? And even the grasses, are you getting it? Because what makes you different is what? The power, the power components in the blessing. Subdue, have dominion. That's why we must subdue. That's why we must have dominion. That's what makes our perfection manifested on earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? And number three, Adam was the only creature. God breathed into Genesis 2 verse 7 says, and God breathed into Adam and became what? A living soul. 
It was the only preacher God painted into the only preacher made in the image and likeness of God. The only preacher that uh, 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 that had five components of the blessings as against three that others had, and the only preacher that God breathed into. So by creating Adam in his image and likeness, God made a flesh version of himself. <laughs> he made the, he didn't make a counterfeit version. He made a flesh version of himself. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? He made a flesh version of himself. But though the material he used to create this flesh version was rubbish. Because if you look at the word dust there in the Hebrew, it actually means rubbish. But this makes us understand how God can use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He used rubbish to make a flesh version of himself, to make a perfect version of himself in the flesh. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the reason why that's, that makes us understand that God is the originator of recycling. Today we have what we call recycled plastic blocks. I was watching it on the internet, and they are stronger than concrete blocks. Hit them on the ground, they don't break. Use a hammer to hit them, they don't break. But they are recycled plastic blocks. Now we have recycled plastic shirts. Nylons, plastic shirts. We are recycling a lot of things now. Now, the, 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 the technology of recycling was simply discovered from creation of man. God using what? Is called a waste, rubbish, to create a perfect version of him. So it's not you. You are living what the Father made. Now, by blessing Adam, God empowered him to think, speak, and act like him. I mean, something. The blessing is beyond cars, it's beyond houses, it's beyond the what else, land, wife, children. No, we have limited the blessings to peripherals. The blessing is beyond that. I remember one of God who said it, the most great enemy was the richest uh, man of God in Africa. And he came on the altar and he said, That's an insult to me. How can you rate me based on money? He said, How can you rate a man who speaks and it comes to pass? You can't rate such a man. People didn't understand. But let me help you understand what you understood. The blessing of God is God's empowerment to man to make him think speak and act like him. That's why Adam could name the animals. For him to name them, he had to think. Is that not so? And then he had to do what? Speak. So the blessing is bigger than what we are calling it. Oh, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Materiality, carnality, that's what we call it. No! A blessed man is a man who stands in the stead of Elohim. Is a man who stands in the stead of Yahweh. Just like Elijah said, as long as just like Elijah said, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, there shall be no rain for three and a half years. He didn't say according to the word of God, he said, according by my word. In other words, I have become so one with Yahweh that I am not thinking his thoughts and I'm not speaking his word. So when you hear my words, you are actually hearing Yahweh. Yes, yes, yes. That's what we're talking about here. That's what, that's what is called the blessing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Let's wake up to the realities of the blessing. Men who speak the mind of God, who speak the counsel of Elohim, who speak the counsel of Yahweh, those are blessed men. They may not have the big houses, the big houses, they may not have the, the materialities, or whatever you call them, but they can speak the counsel of God, they can speak the mind of God in a situation, and it happens. No wonder who went at his over joined um, 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 forces with uh, with 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 um, with um, David's son. Uh, what's his name again? When I over joined forces with him. Uh, ah, when David heard it, David said, "Hey, I over is not over. I over." The Bible says, "When I over spoke, it was as though it, as though God has spoken. His counsel was as though God has spoken." And God said, "Oh God!" Oh, and then he said, "Oh." In this matter, God, it's only you that can call his counsel around. Because he actually speaks your mind. He actually speaks your mind. Only you. I don't know what David's armor, right hand man. For any part of the way, he must always use the eye of it because the guy's counsel was the heart of the father, the mind of the father. So it was an asset to him. So when he saw that the guy had changed camp, he said, this matter. <laughs> and actually the advice that Ito gave to uh, David's son. 
Absalom. They asked Tansel again to report. He left Tansel. He told him, wait. Wait for when David is there. Go after him. And he pin him down. But because David has spoken to the one that I even know speaks his mind, and that one said, no problem. I will not, I cannot change. You see, even, even the father, even the father, I mean, like, he could not change the counsel. Because Ahithophel was speaking his mind. So what did he do? He made Absalom reject the counsel. I you know what I'm saying? That's the gravity of what? The blessing. The Bible says, the gifts and calling of God are without what? Repentance. When he blesses, he cannot take it. He made Ahithophel to start speaking his mind. He could not change it. The only thing he could do was to change the mind of Absalom. That's the blessing, man. I, I get what I'm saying. I'm not going to say none of this. Say, by breathing into Adam, God gave himself. And I mean himself. If you read the word breath, the word breath is the Hebrew word, the shama. It means divine inspiration. It means the intellect. It means uh, emotion. It means divine ability. It means spirit. It means soul. By breathing into Adam, God released himself into Adam. And you know what? These three things made Adam what? The perfect flesh version of everything. The perfect what? Flesh version of everything. So God called everything he created very good because he loved all creation, not because Adam was very good. Are you know what I'm saying? So that verse of scripture, Genesis 1 verse 1, was just a lumping up of creation. It's not because Adam was what? Very good. He just loved everything is very good. But inside the very good there was a perfect. The perfect was what? Adam. Adam was made what? A perfect man. As a perfect man, he was neither mortal nor was he immortal. He was not meant to die. And he was created to make what? The earth move from very good to what? Perfect. Furthermore, we learn that Adam lost his perfection and could not make the earth perfect. So God kept looking for a man to make the, the earth perfect until he got to Moses, who he gave the law. We saw that God kept looking for man from Adam. Uh, Enoch, Enoch, Noah, Noah, Abraham, uh, Abraham uh, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. And then when he got to Moses, he saw through the lands that he fought, sought for men. He saw that there was still a challenge making, uh, with making the earth perfect with each of these people. Uh, so what did he do? He now, he, the children of Israel requested that whatsoever he tells them to do, they will do. And he said, well, that's a beautiful opportunity. Take the law. Are you getting what I'm saying? He gave the law. The law itself was not also perfect. Praise God. But it was meant to do what? To bring man to the perfect one, which is the person of Jesus. Are we together? And Jesus brought back the lost perfection. Galatians 3 verse 24. It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us all to Christ. That we might be justified by faith. Now, hear this very well. Now, between Moses and Jesus, between Moses and Jesus, there was no proper, I will look at the word, typology for, for Jesus. Because Moses said, The Lord shall send a prophet up like me to you. After him, <laughs> there was no reference that I will say that again. As, as wonderful as, as Isaiah was. One of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament, since uh, all his books prophesied about the coming of Jesus. Oh, see, he could not say, the Lord will send the prophet like me to you. And you know what I'm saying? Yes. As wonderful as Elijah was, still, he could not say, the Lord will send the prophet like me to you. Because Elijah, Elijah was really, let me say what they call him, <laughs> he was quick at fire. Are you getting know what I'm saying? From Moses, to so Jesus, the last typology of Jesus was Moses. And so, the Father knew that there would be a gap between Moses and what? Jesus. Now, what will stand in to refer the people to Jesus? Moses has already referred them to Jesus by telling them what? Ah, the Lord will send what a prophet like me to you. He only told them this is what will happen. He has referred them to a coming prophet. Now, after Moses leaves, what will point them to Jesus? After the is what? Who will take them to Jesus? The Father knew that Elijah will not do that. Isaiah will prophesy about Jesus. Micah will prophesy. But no one can actually be the schoolmaster who will take us to Jesus. And that is why he allowed for the law to be given. Because the law is the schoolmaster. And another translation says he's the slave 
who actually takes the child to school. You see, some of us have house help, so we should take our children to school. He's a slave who takes the child to school. You know, it's amazing how people say they prefer to hold on to the slave instead of staying in school. So the Lord was a slave who took us to Jesus, the school of the Father. Are you getting what I'm saying? It says the Lord was a school of our schoolmaster to, to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. So same way God broke the order protocol of the tribe set aside for the priesthood, that is the Levite tribe was set aside for the priesthood, and changed the tribe from where the great high priest would come from to Le from Levite to Judah. It was also necessary for God to change the law which he did. So today we are actually studying on the topic I titled The Law Has Changed. The law has changed. The law has changed. So we see that uh, the schoolmaster brought us brought us to Jesus. And now, we also understood in our last teaching that even Moses did not know that the great high priest, the Messiah, we come from the tribe of Judah. Nobody, he said, if I, he said even the tribe of Judah had no place in the altar. It was only the tribe of Levi, we learned in our last lesson, that they inherited it by seal and by the security that Abraham made for them for the priesthood responsibility. Why they were Abraham? Through the tithes. They inherited it. So, according to protocol, the no other tribe was meant to enter the priesthood or carry on the priesthood. But God broke protocol and brought a Judah. From Judah, he brought the great high priest, the person of Jesus. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now, since God broke protocol and changed the tribe of priesthood, I get what I'm saying? Because by moving it from Levi, I take it from Levi and he brought it to Judah. He changed. I get what I'm saying? Since he broke protocol and changed the tribe where the priesthood is meant to come from, it was also important that he also had to do what? Change the law. Because the tribe had been changed, so the law had been changed. And also the the priest the, 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 the priesthood practice had also been changed. Praise God for the law. Now look at Hebrews chapter, chapter 7 verse 12. It says, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. I get what I'm saying. Because it has changed, the priesthood has been changed. Now it's important, it's paramount for the law also to be what changed, which God did. Praise God forevermore. Now, so why did God change the law? The four is number one, because the old law could not make anyone or anything perfect. It couldn't make any perfect. Hebrews chapter ten verse one says, "For the law, having a shadow of good things to come." Now the law was not bad, but it was a shadow. When you see a shadow, what does it mean? It means the substance is close by. Are you getting what I'm saying? The substance is close by. So the law was a shadow of the good things to come. The law was a shadow of Christ to come. We talked about it as the hope. The law was a shadow of, of the hope to come, of Christ to come, of the Messiah to come. Amen. And not the very image of the thing. The law was not the very image of the thing. Now let me understand something. The book of Hebrews, uh, there's, the, 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 there's, uh, the, there's still debate as to who wrote the book of Hebrews. Some people say it's the, the Apostle Paul because they say the writings somehow look like his writings. But they also said that, you know, the introduction of Paul, maybe that Paul wrote to churches, or letters he wrote. And his introductions were kind of different a little from the introduction of Hebrew. Now, but there's a little challenge here. The reason, uh, 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 the reason for the book of Hebrew was this. So though some believe, some believe that it was Paul, some don't believe it was Paul, whatever the author may be, he did an excellent job. What, what, why do we say that? Because he was actually addressing a particular set of people. The writer of the Hebrews was addressing the Hebrews, the Jews, who had converted to Christianity. I get what I'm saying? And they had a challenge with leaving the practice of the law. They had held on to the practice of the law and wanted to still uh, practice the, 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 the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Number, number two, many of them had a challenge with Jesus being the desire. Why? Or oh, sorry, or oh, Jesus being, being called the great high priest. Why? Because according to the protocol, the priest must come from what? From the tribe of Levi. And now you are coming to tell us that a priest not came from Judah. No! From Moses, the now. Priest who come from Levi. 
How can you now tell us that the peace would come from what? Judah. Now, the other challenge was this. Now, Jesus, if you look to the reign of Matthew, Matthew said they reign Jesus and in his genealogy. Why was he so? Because according to the, to the beliefs in Judaism, the Messiah must come from the royal family. Now, David was a royal family. And prior to when Jesus came for like six centuries, the Davidic throne had been what? Uh, and been empty. Now Jesus comes in the in, in, in the lineage of David from the side of his mother, baby, even from the side of his foster father, uh, Joseph. So from two sides, the way was what from the lineage of David. So according to according to the beliefs of the Judaism, Jesus is uh, the Messiah is meant to be come from, from royalty. That means Jesus is actually the Messiah. Now, though some believe, some don't believe, but he has, he has settled that aspect of it. Now, these people who are converted from the Judaism to Christianity, they know something, that there is a place for a king and there is a place for what? A priest. That is a practice that God has put in place. David was a king and he had Nathan, his prophet, to do the work for him. And I think because he also had his priest who was also to do the work of the priest for him. And you get what I'm saying? Now, but David actually was in a king who knew how to delve into the three realms. He was an Old Testament revelation of the new creation. I mean to get that. Now, so they understood that a king is a king, a priest is a king. You cannot have a priestly king. And you get what I'm saying? And so when they saw Jesus come from the lineage of, of David, that means he came from the lineage of, 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 of kingship. And now they're also telling us he's also a priest. How can we have a priest king or a king priest? They didn't understand that the Bible says in a very gentleman moment that so say for you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, that you may show for the glory of him who has called out of that person to a power in And the book of Revelation says, For ye are kings and one and priests. They didn't understand that Jesus was bringing the new order of identity. And this identity is the identity that makes you support the king and the priest together. So in this identity, you don't need a priest to stand before stand for you in the presence of Elohim to make atonement for you. The great high priest has done that. The mediator between God and man has done that. So every one of us, we are now priests. We can stand before the Father, and yet we are royalty. That's the identity that Christ came to show to them. But they still have a problem with this identity. So that's why the writer of the Hebrews started making things clear to them by his book. Are you going to say? So the law could not make anything perfect. It was a shadow of good things to come. Praise God for the law. It says, um, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered yet by year continually make the commas thereon to perfect. With the yearly sacrifices, the Lord cannot still make anything or anyone what perfect. He can't make anyone perfect. That confesses the Bible that to what? Change the law. Number two, because the order of protocols of the tribe for the priesthood have changed. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 13. It says, For he of whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe, of which no man came attendant at the altar. For it is evident that the Lord sprang out, I said it again, no man is, the, the, the person that the priest was talking about here is from another tribe, and nobody came attendant to him at the altar. Are you getting what I'm saying? He says, For our Lord, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, not what? Levi. And we also learned in this rendering, it is the same Hebrew chapter 7, which I will learn that it says, I appoint you a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. He says, and the spread out of Judah, of which tribe Moses speak not in consigning priesthood. Are we together? So, for, for Jesus to come from the order of Judah, the order has been broken, the order has been changed, the protocol has been changed, and if the protocol of priesthood and order has been changed, then of necessity the law of the change. And then number three, because the practice of atonement by the priest had changed. <laughs> this one is powerful. It says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now the priest of old goes with the blood of bulls. He goes with the blood of goats. He goes with the blood of calves. He uses the blood of animals to make a tomb. No priest can cut his hand 
and spit his blood into the into the bowl and then make an appointment. No, he can't do that. It becomes an abomination because his blood is a sinful blood. So in the practice of old, they use the blood of an animal. God will not take the life in the blood of man. The Bible says, it, it says, it, it says for the life of the living is in the blood. And it says anyone that kills a man, if that man's blood shall be required of him. So God will not take the life in the death of mortal men. Are we together? And so we cannot use, and number two, because we are falling, we cannot use our blood to make atonement. So the priest used the blood of animals, which God said it cannot make atonement to, but it can cover for a while. He used the blood to do that act. He used the blood of animals to do that act. That was a practice. That was the, 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 the priestly order. You use the blood of the required animal to, come, to carry out the act of atonement. He said, but in this time, this priest, this priest did not take the blood of him of a goat. He didn't take the blood of a calf. He didn't take the blood of a turtle dove. He went with his own blood. He went with his own blood into the holies of holies. And he made an atonement for us. He had not one. Obtained eternal redemption. He did obtain redemption. He obtained one. Eternal redemption. So let me make you understand something. Redemption is eternal on God's part. But on your part, you determine whether it's eternal or not. So, some people say, is there anything like eternal security? Yes, there's eternal security. What Jesus did was eternal. He obtained eternal, he didn't obtain part-time redemption, no. He obtained eternal redemption. And that is an eternal security. That's why we are sealed by the Holy Spirit when we receive Jesus. But the eternity of our security is also determined on whether we remain in Christ or not. Are we together? If you are not in Christ, if you choose to be in Christ today and you choose to walk out of Christ tomorrow, if you make a practice of sin, your eternal security, you have walked out of it. But so long as you are in Christ, your eternal security is secured. Praise God forevermore. And then number four, the fourth reason why God changed the law was because the law was not intended to make man perfect, but to bring man to Christ Jesus. Who alone can make man perfect by justification? Genesis 3, verse 24. It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. So the above truth makes us understand that God changed the law just because of perfection. Are you understand what I'm saying? The Bible says, Romans chapter 8, verse 24, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are righteous who are under the law. Not out of the faith, but out of the spirit. Say, for the law of life in Christ Jesus, you know, for the law of life in Christ, for the law of spirit of life in Christ, has set us free from the law of sin and death. So this law was called the law of sin and death. And for the law of spirit of, of, of the life in Christ Jesus to get into operation now, the law had to be changed. So it set us free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus takes us to perfection. The good thing is that the law of sin and death was a shadow of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of sin and death was a pointer, was the one who carried us to the law of what? Of spirit of, of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of sin and death was what pointed us to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of sin and death could just only make us very good, but it could not make us perfect. And let me tell you something, even God told Abraham, walk before me and be you what? Perfect. And he says, be ye perfect as your holy, holy, holy as your heavenly father is holy. God demands perfection from us. Why? Because the first man he created was what? Perfect. And the new creation is perfect. Are you not know saying? So our daily, so our daily walk with God is to do what? Is to make our spiritual identity become our physical reality. <laughs> that's our daily walk with God. That's why we do every day. That's why we pray. That's why we spend time praying. Spend time studying. Invest time. Sorry, not spend time. Invest time praying. Invest time studying our Bible. Fellowshiping with the saints. Serving the Lord. All the things we do, we are doing them to do what? To make our spiritual identity become our 
physical world, reality. God had to change the law because from the beginning it was perfection that was the idea, that was the intention of the Father. Amen. The above makes us understand that God can change everything, anything and everything to ensure his will of perfection is made manifest. So whatever God must change in order for his will of perfection to manifest in our life now and always, he will change it now if we accept his change. Mm. And you know what I'm saying? Yes. Because this is not a matter of, I pray for you. This is a matter of what you accept. Do you accept this change? Because some of us, we are itching in God's change plan. God, I like myself like that. You see people that say, this is my anger. I cannot let it go. Hey, this is my habit. I cannot let it go. Hey, God, God, see, you can change every other thing. But this one, don't change it. If you like, if you accept his change, even when it's not comfortable for you, if you accept this change, I tell you the truth, perfection can exude from you. Perfection can come out of you. Your spiritual identity, should your spiritual identity can soon become your physical reality. Who you are in your spirit, man, man. the perfect man can soon become the perfect being on earth. It is possible so long as we are open to God changing others in our lives, to God changing laws in our lives. So some of us, we are putting some laws in our lives. This is the way I am. This is the way I act. This is the way I be. We have put some laws in our lives, and we are told, but these laws are no good area. But if God could change the law of the of sin and death, to, to, uh, 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 and then put in place the law of spirit of life in Christ, if He could change the order of the priesthood from the tribe of Levi to the tribe of what of Judah, then there is nothing He cannot change. Child of God, God wants to change something in you because until that thing is changed his perfection cannot come out of you. His perfect like your perfect reality cannot be seen by all. Your real identity on the inside cannot come out to the outside. And I tell you the Bible says the endless expectation of the creation are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They are still waiting. They are yearning. Why? Because we are claiming to be sons of God but we are not living our sonship. We are claiming to be children of God, but we are looking like children of the devil. We are claiming to be children of God, but we are looking like bastards. And the world is getting, creation is getting confused by our confusion. Today it's time for us to allow our spiritual identity become a physical reality. If God has to break your hip, let him break your hip. If God has to kill the child like he allowed, if God has to allow the child to die like he allowed David's child of Bethlehem to die, the proof of your imperfection uh, that God has to remove. Allow him to remove it. Uh, God looked at David and Bathsheba uh, and said, yes, you have already made the mistake. Uh, but this child uh, is the proof of your imperfection. Uh, I would allow this proof to stand before you on a daily basis. Uh, I have forgiven you, but I don't want this proof to be glaring to the world. Uh, and it was a proof of your immorality, not only your immorality, it was a proof of your ability to commit murder. Uh, don't put in one no. Say, if I allow this child to say, David, you cannot stand as a man after my own heart. So what do I do? I remove that hindrance to you standing as a man after my own heart. Yes, it pained the heart of David, but it was for his own good. Child of God, I don't know what it is that God has to remove this morning. I don't know what it is that God has to get off your life this morning. I don't know what it is that God has to change your life this morning. It's time for you to open yourself to change. It's time for change. Like they said, the only constant in life is change. It's time to cry for change. Lord, I'm tired of remaining the way I am. I want a change. I don't know if you're trying to pray me this morning. I can pray this to me and say, dear, I'm a father. I'm a father. Whatever you must change in my life, for your will of perfection to manifest in my life, change it now. In Jesus' name. Again, say, dear, I'm a father. Let's do it in the name of the Lord.
That's what God will have you tell you. Say those barricades have now become your limit. I see you just in the middle, and you are living your life. You're living your life. This is why my things, this is my things, so they are become, but no longer take it. They are good. He said, but they have become your limitation. The Lord says, I should tell you that He wants you to start living by the Spirit. He says, He wants you to start living by His Spirit. He said, not by the limitations you have placed, not by the boundaries you have placed for yourself. He says, He wants you to start living by His Spirit. He says, I, I, I assure you something, as you start living by my Spirit, even those boundaries, you will see that those things were only just stepping stones. I will take you to higher heights in your life. That those things have not taken you to. He says you will discover that there is a joy of perfection you begin to experience in every area where you have put those boundaries. There's a joy of perfection you begin to experience. There's a joy of perfection you begin to experience. I see somebody, your hand is just closed. It's closed, it's closed, it's closed. And you cannot take anything with that hand. And, and, and the Lord has been trying to release so much to you, but you are unable to collect. And you are complaining, you have been complaining, you have been complaining. Why am I not getting blessings? Why am I not getting things? Why is my things just time for me? Lord, let me tell you, in the realms of the spirit, your hands are closed like this. And you cannot take nothing. You cannot take nothing. The Lord says, as you tell you, open them up. Open them up. And you ask me, um, Pastor, how do I open them up? Just lift up your hands to God at this point and say, Jesus, take the wheel of my life. Lord Jesus, I, I surrender it all to you. I'm tired of running my life. Jesus, take the wheel of my life. Just do that. Just say that with me now. And as you do that, you, you feel a sensation, a peaceful sensation on the inside of you. And so then you will just discover that in the shortest space of time, things in life will start turning around. Say it's the spirit of the Lord. Say it's the spirit of the Lord. Say it's the spirit of the Lord. For somebody, I see, I see a part of your body, just a part of your body, and it's stiff. A part of your body is stiff, it's stiff, it's stiff, it's stiff. A part of your body is stiff. It's not moving, it is not moving. It's stiff as though it's stone cold dead. It's so brutal. As though it's so stone cold dead. A part of your body is just stiff as though it's stone cold dead. Yes, 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 yes. The power of God is surging through that part of your body now. You are beginning to feel vibration in your fingers. You begin to feel vibrations in your fingers. Now from your fingers, it's getting to your to that foot, the vibrations there. Now that's the power of God running through. And, 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 and as the power of God rolls through, the whole world, the, everything that has kept that part of your body is stiff. It's getting off now. The power of God is re is removing them. I, I see, I see, I see, I see something like draining, draining it, draining some liquids out. The power of God is removing them. There's no swelling. It's just stiffness. The power is still flowing, but you can't understand how it's still stiff. The power of God is running through that part of your body now, and everything that has been there that has made that part stiff, it's coming out now. They are coming out. They are coming out. They are coming out. They are coming out. Now the power of God is. You begin to. You begin to feel freedom in this part. Now begin to flex your hand, flex your leg. Everything is working now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit of living. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. I see somebody with the vibe on the left side of your head. The Lord is healing you now. The Lord is healing you now. Yes, the power of God is running through that left side of your head. I'm healing you now. Thank you, Jesus, for healing. 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 There's somebody here. You have been crying for a change in your in your finances. A change. You have been crying for a change in your finances. The Lord be happy to tell you. You. Listen to me, but the Lord will have me tell you that the change is in your hand. It's not in his hand any longer, it is in your hand. The Lord will have me tell you, change the way you think about money, and money will start, your finances will start changing. That's what the Lord is saying to you. Change the way you think about money, and your finances will start. He said, just why you have seen money as a God, and that's why finances have made you their slave. Money has made you slave. He said, yes, for start thinking of money as your footmarks. And your finances will experience changes. Says the Spirit of God. There's somebody in your heart, you're feeling a warm sensation. A warm sensation. You have been crying, Lord, I want to know you better. I want to go deeper in love with you, Lord. I want to go deeper in love with you. Right there in your heart, you are feeling a warm sensation. That's the love of the Spirit. That's the love of God just romancing you. That's the change of the desire. That's the change of desire. For somebody, you have been feeling, you have been feeling dryness in your work with God. You have been crying to 
hear the hear, hear God. You open your Bible. For before you used to hear God, even when you pick up the Bible, you just get revelation. But for a period of for a period of time now, you open your Bible and it doesn't even it does, it does, it does, there's nothing that excites you in your Bible. You close it up again. You try to pray and there's nothing. You just you're just dry. You come to church and you feel like it's a boring environment. You are just dry. You know, the power of the, 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 the Lord is saying, I'm, I'm coming back in. He said, no, 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 no. Hear me very well. He said there was a particular, a particular conversation you had. And that conversation locked up your spirit, man. That conversation locked up. He said, because in that conversation, there were some words that were spoken to you in the conversation. And it hurt you. It hurt you. And bitterness came into your heart. I mean, so tired. By virtue of this bitterness, your spirit man could not contain the bitterness. So it had to shrink. It had to hold on. And the bitterness has been the gulf between your spirit man and your soul. Yeah, it's very well. So your spirit man has to maintain its perfection, but your soul is holding on to the bitterness. So your spirit man has to stay away from your soul. That's what has been happening. And that's why it looks like nothing has happened. The power of God is entering into you. And that, that, that seed of bitterness is uprooted. In fact, that tree of bitterness is uprooted. In the name of Jesus, as it's uprooted, there is a freedom again. There's a free flow between your spirit and your soul again. In the name of Jesus, the power of God has uprooted that tree of bitterness now. You are even feeling that, yeah, you, as I told you, you remember that statement and you remember how it made it bitter. But now, you don't feel it any longer. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's uprooted, that's uprooted it. And now there's a free flow. As I'm talking to you, you are feeling that warm sensation in your heart. Now, as I'm talking to you, go ahead and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You will see that there's a flow already. There's a flow. And as you pick up your Bible, there is a flow. You see that your, your, your love for God flows back again. I see God changing destinies, changing lives. I see God changing lives. I see the I see the Lord changing lives. I see God making drastic changes to people's destinies, drastic changes to people's lives. So I, I see messed up lives that are being cleaned up. Say it's the spirit of God, messed up lives that are being cleaned up. The, the hand of the Lord, I see it like 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 a big wiper, a big wiper on the car, cleaning up. Somebody there, I see your I see your mind, just your whole brain. There's the the, 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 the power of God is running through your brain and it's cleaning up some dirty nonsense that have been there. Images, um, um, ideas, um, um, pictures, uh, um, 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 words that have thus far deleted the perfection of God in your life. The hand of God is cleaning them up, says the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, please, I have to quickly do this before uh, we close. If you know you're under the sound of my voice and you know me, Jesus, you're not a personal Savior, please, you have to do this with me. Say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, today I come to you. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you died and resurrected for me. You shed your blood of Calvary Street to set me free. Jesus, today, I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. I choose to serve and follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone who made this prayer. I thank you for receiving them in the beloved and empowering them to stand. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, that they were just. Lord, I thank you for changing everything in our life that must be changed. Everything in our life that must be changed for us to experience your perfection. Thank you for changing them. I thank you for testimonies that have erupted. Be glorified forever in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please send us your testimonies. Uh, email addresses uh, uh, at gmail.com. Um, also, do well to like this video and share. I know you'll be blessed. Let somebody get blessed also with this. Please, tomorrow is another time again. I trust God to be with you tomorrow. God bless you. Grace to you.